Mental health is so important. It's how we function. It's how we eat. It's how we sleep. It's how we do everything. So I took that and I ran with it only because I know how much that I can take and I knew where my breaking point was going at. I'm going to start this video by saying I'm a very grateful person. I'm very grateful for everything that I have, everything that I've worked for or everything that I've earned or anything that's fallen into my lap. So don't take this as it's okay to quit a job, but this video is firmly on mental health and taking mental health very seriously. Sometimes I think I can see jobs as relationships, you know, in the beginning, everything's good, peaches and cream, you know, the honeymoon stage. And then when you start to figure everything out, it goes downhill, right? You start to see the stuff that you don't like about the job. You start to see the true color. You start to see the stuff that you're, you know, not pretty much aligned with. I don't like to say lie to about but you know a lot of times when we start working these jobs we're happy that we're starting to get our income but it, everything comes with a price right nothing is free so just a little background on me so this video can make a lot of sense and you guys can get an overview of how i feel how i feel um i live in florida but i was born in boston massachusetts um i moved here when i was nine i graduated high school in 2014 i went straight to a community college um i got pregnant with my first son when i was 20 years old and then i stopped going to school for a little bit and then when he turned two i already had my prereqs from the community college so then i went to a university usf it took me about two semesters three semesters and then i graduated um my degree was in well my degree is in public health in a minor in infection control. Now I'm still sitting on this degree. I'm not too sure what exactly that I want to do it, but I'm still happy that I accomplished something. Initially I wanted to do nursing, but then I realized mm, I don't think that that's the field for me because I'm a little emotional and it just, I don't feel like it was, you know, but I spoke to an advisor at USF and they told me about that major. It was a fairly new major was about 20 30 years old so i hopped into that and i really did like um the courses that came with it so that's how i ended up getting that degree when my son was around like i would say one years old i started to see signs that he wasn't responding to his name um he wasn't talking he wasn't saying words so that put a halt on a lot of stuff too. Um, I had to put him in therapy. He is autistic. Um, I just recently got him diagnosed. Uh, when I had my second son, I prayed so much when I was pregnant. I always say I think I over prayed because he came to be autistic as well. So I do have two boys on the spectrum and it is a handful. Um, it was really hard getting them diagnosed and everything. So I finally just got them diagnosed. Um, I believe that was in March and May. It was like two months apart. Um, it was really good because I was going back and forth to try to get my oldest son diagnosed and I kept getting the runaround. And my second son had a caseworker from his daycare. Um, a lady used to come there once a week or well, twice a week to do his therapy. And she was like, you know, your oldest son's not diagnosed. I'm like, no, he's not diagnosed, but I know for a fact. So got that out of the way okay fast forward as you guys can see i was working at amazon but i got tired of it it was really stressful you know i was working on that smart pack machine and it just seemed like the more that you did <clears throat> the threshold would be higher they were set to go higher and higher and then you know as a human i started to get agitated and it's just like you know i'm working on this overtime for what i'm killing myself for what you know like it's too much so I'm like you know what let me go ahead and just go flex and look for something else so i ended up getting a job at a group home i worked there not really full time but it was prn so anytime somebody needed me to pick up their shift or they needed um you know availability i squeezed in and then upon then i think i asked um 
like on a social site, Instagram, I asked like, who's hiring, you know, cause at this point I wanted something full time. So this girl told me that a cable company was hiring and that's where I ended up applying to. I got the job as a retention specialist and I started there. The training was for like eight weeks um it was really good so you know we learned about the pricings and you know of course the position was to keep the customers you know inform them about their products and etc so that went well and then about four months into working for the company a competitor came in and decided to offer competitive prices in a lot of our areas like the job that seemed somewhat easy or, you know, I was really strategic with my sales pitch and how I would, you know, keep the customer, everything changed. The metrics changed, the performance metrics changed. Um, it just got very stressful. And if anyone knows or has worked in a retention department, I will say it's worse than sales because at least someone with sales doesn't have the product. So you can inform them about the product and, you know, to convince them you know tell them you know how does it fit into their life but the customers who already have the product it's going to be hard to convince them when they already experienced it and had you know their image or their thoughts or viewpoints on how the product works so it was just really bad like i started to do terrible like my stats went from good okay to horrible I started missing days of work like it got very stressful and I just couldn't handle it no more and then on top of that dealing with kids that's on the spectrum and then my mom moved to another state it was just a lot at once I just I just couldn't take it anymore you know there were people there that worked there for five years 10 years 15 20 years and these are the people that would convince me, you know, like, you know, just stick it out, go on a leave of absence, try this, try that. And then it was just like, you know, if I do take a leave and what if I don't like it when I come back and I'm still doing horrible with my stats. So I tried to do the FMLA thing and it just was like, it felt like God telling me like, you need to leave this job because I try to get FMLA from my oldest son, went there and found out that he didn't have insurance anymore. Of course, I can't call right then and there and say, hey, my son's insurance not working, you know, X, Y, Z. So, you know, when you don't do FMLA paperwork, it's like a month period, sometimes two weeks to a month. <clears throat> and it wouldn't work. I called my second son's doctor's office. They told me they would fax the paperwork over. Never got the paperwork. Went to my doctor and... I had like blood work, you know, you know, your annual checkup for stuff, diabetes, cholesterol, etc. And she told me that I had to have a separate appointment set up, you know, because it's a lot of paperwork to fill out, which is understandable. So I'm just like, you know what? That's three strikes and I can't get this paperwork done. So I'm like, this is just convincing me more and more to leave this job. And then the abuse that we would get from the customers or people who were Trump supporters, Kamala supporters, they're trying to figure out what do we support. I don't know how I get from internet, TV, and home phone to you're voting for Kamala, aren't you? Or you're voting for Trump, are you? Or I'm not sure who you're voting for, but and I'm like, this is so off topic. And they would use like, you know, words like retarded. I know it's my job, but I hate that word so much, especially because of my kids. And when people talk offensive like that, it's like, I don't have to deal with this. Um, sometimes like I could tell when they were racist because they would use like certain comments and stuff like that. And it was just like to the point where if you're calling in and it's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm like, good morning, my name is Shamaya. How am I assist you today? Yeah, you need to fix this. No good morning. No, hey, how are you doing? Or, you know, we have to fix your problem regardless. So it's like, you don't have to come in guns blazing in order for me to fix your problem, you know? So I don't know what it was. But sometimes I would literally be crying like I hated working at that job so much. And the pay was so good because I was getting paid $18 an hour. And then we'd get commissioned the last check of the month. The commission before tax could be anywhere between $1,800 to 3000 
And I knew I would, I would say never. I know I wouldn't find a job fast that's paying that much. So that would add extra stress onto it because I decided to work around the money that I'm making. You know, my lifestyle worked without what I was making. And it was just, it was just horrible. And like my initial plan was to stay there for two years so that I could purchase a home work on my credit and that just made me feel like a failure too like I was like I set these goals and I prayed so hard to get a good job and I got it and here I am messing up you know so it's kind of like when I start a new job I'd have to start all over as far as the job income and it's just I don't know I started to have like bad anxiety I was like really depressed um if I was already having a bad day so it was it was really a lot i will say it's an experience because working at that job going to any other customer service job will be cake because i don't feel like there's anybody worse than people who are literally obsessed with tv and feel like they can't live without it i'm just sitting here thinking like what can i do to you know um go to another job and i'm still making the same money and i'll insert pictures of like different pay stubs to show you guys like how much money I was making I was making really good money but I feel like now that I look back they have to pay us that much because there's no way that people would stay <laughs> without the commission like there's literally no way that people would still work there um dealing with that like there's no amount of money that could equate to dealing with verbal abuse every day literally every day there's not one day where I had a set of good calls so now i'm like just in that point in my life where i'm 28 i'm about to be 30 i don't know what my passion is i don't know what i like to do i know i like to talk i know i like to help people i know i like to inform people i really love math but then it's like shamaya like what do you want to do you know that line between where you are and you know and your potential is the worst feeling ever and that's where i am right now like i don't know what my passion is i don't know what makes me a hundred percent happy you know and it's just like something has to give you know and on top of that of course you want to do something where you're making good money because the cost of everything's rising especially here in florida like the cost of everything's getting so expensive in order for you to survive you have to really have a side gig or work part-time job even a home with a two parent household or you know two incomes coming in everyone has their own financial issues and then on top of that you have everything that's one together you know so it's like where is my common ground like what's my passion like you guys can help me too what do you guys see me doing like i don't know i really just can't find exactly what it is and i know it's there like i feel like i have so much potential but i'm just seriously struggling with what it is exactly that is going to push me there to the next level i'm gonna have more free time now that my mental health has gotten better and i'll be able to focus on my channel more focus on starting my business i have some things coming out that I really, want to watch, I really want to try and see like if it's going to work out for me so you just know what's for you you know like there's some people that you know they love that type of job you know but you just know what's for you like I remember um you know our our site leader our boss he really knew that you know everyone's stats was dropping and although that they knew that there was what the reason was for it he got into the meeting and he literally was telling us, you know, the expectations and stuff like that. And he was all like, a lot of you guys are in pretty bad shape. And I'm just like, who talks to someone like that who already knows that? Like, they are, we already know we're not doing well. And it's stuff that's out of our control. If we have offers that can help the customer, cool. But if there's somebody that's competing with us and we can't beat it, then what do you want us to do? Like, we can't pull something out of our butt and just tell the customer, hey, I can do this. Like, And a lot of times the customers were already convinced of what they wanted to do when they called in. They wanted to cancel when they called in, unless we had something really, really good. Like, 
I was like, it was just so many things that were just piling up on top of each other that was like, yeah, this is not for me. But the money, I want to say good. Like I was bringing in a good, I would say on a good on a good month, six thousand dollars. On an okay month, four thousand dollars a month. So imagine that coming from what at Amazon I was making like nine hundred dollars a week. So, I don't know. I'm getting to that point though. I'm slowly but surely getting there. Like as I'm progressing to my 30s, I'm like, wow, like all I've ever done really is worked hard, worked overtime, worked sales job. You know, I had my kids, I had took time off to cater to their needs. And it's just like, this is my time. I have to do something for myself. I have to do something that makes me happy. And hopefully I'll find that soon, you know. Hopefully I'll find that soon.